Welcome to this video. Uh, this video is the first in a sequence of uh, videos on circuit analysis and the goal behind this video is to give you some fundamental ideas, give you some fundamental concepts. This is basically stuff that you need to know that quite often doesn't get taught explicitly uh, because everybody assumes everybody knows it. So to begin, um, what I'd like to do is introduce an example. Uh, this fine piece of artwork is a light bulb. So this is the light bulb uh, connected by two wires to two batteries which are touching each other. And uh, those of you that have done some electrical sorts of things before will recognize this as uh, basically the inside of a flashlight. Um, and we'll use this example to uh, go through some of these different concepts. The first thing to notice is that you typically see two different types of components in an electrical circuit. You see something that's playing the same role as the batteries here, which is a supply. Uh, basically, uh, batteries or generators or um, uh, solar panels things like that are supplies and they supply energy to other circuit elements. And the other circuit element that you see here, which for this one we have a light bulb, um, these are loads. And loads are things like light bulbs, resistors, motors, uh, things that take energy from other circuit elements and usually convert it into something useful, in this case light and heat. Uh, if it's a motor, rotational motion, or actually linear motion. Uh, but the idea is loads uh, take energy from sources and do interesting things with it, do useful things with it. We, in this series, are going to talk about what's called a lumped element model. A lumped element model. Okay. This is the standard type of model that people use in um, circuit analysis. Uh, you may have heard the, the phrase, all models are wrong, some models are useful. What that means is that a model is some abstraction of reality. It's some way of thinking about reality that allows us to do things like computations and so on. So a lumped element model basically takes all of the components and considers each component as a single entity. So the light bulb would be one entity here. And the batteries would be a second entity here. And the wires that connect the light bulb with the batteries um, we don't really think about. Uh, they end up being what we call perfect conductors. Uh, we'll talk about what that implies in later videos. Um, in the, the alternative to a lumped element model is what you often see called a distributed element model. Distributed elements are things like a wire when you're looking at how fast it takes for electrical signals to propagate through that wire. Um, or perhaps if you're looking at an antenna, uh, for example, your cell phone has an antenna and that antenna radiates electrical or electromagnetic energy. Um, in order to understand how that works, you need to understand the electric fields and the, elect or the magnetic fields that are surrounding the antenna, you need to understand how the signals are propagating through the antenna and through wires connected to the antenna. Um, it's actually a much more difficult uh, branch of electrical engineering. In our case, we will not have to worry about electrical fields. We won't have to worry about how um, signals propagate or electrons propagate through the wires. We won't have to uh, look at that sort of detail. 
And as a consequence, we will come up with models that are actually fairly easy to solve and uh, are, at least compared to distributed element models, uh, but are also extremely useful. Um, lumped element models work pretty well as long as you're not looking at signals that change very dramatically in a very short period of time, which is a long way of saying high frequency signals, or you're not looking at antennas and radiation patterns and so on. So again, we're, we will consider only lumped element models. We'll get rid of the distributed element models so it's not quite so scary. There are several types of circuit analysis that you can do with a lumped element model. And the sequence of videos that I'll put together will do um, all three types. Uh, there is what we call DC, steady state. DC steady state analysis. And the other one that we'll do for sure is AC steady state analysis. And finally, you have transient analysis. And so um, the difference between each of these, DC is a term that, or an acronym that stands for direct current. And what it actually means in practice is things that don't change over time. So DC steady state means that all the voltages and currents in a circuit are not going to change in time. AC steady state analysis, AC stands for alternating current, and uh, that's the kind of current that you would see in an electrical uh, power distribution network, for example. Uh, in AC current, you typically assume that uh, currents and voltages are sinusoids. And so AC steady state analysis involves treating each of your, um, well, uh, involves assuming that all of the voltages and currents in your circuit will be sinusoids. Transient analysis is basically anything that changes as a function of time that's not AC steady state analysis. So transient analysis might include uh, what happens if you take a switch and you flip it at a certain time so that it uh, closes and starts charging a capacitor. Uh, that's an example of transient analysis. Uh, that will be uh, the last topic that gets covered in these videos. OK, so um, a few more things that you need to know about um, circuit analysis that, again, everybody almost always, whoops, assumes. Wow, I just made a mess of that. Um, everybody always assumes that you know, but uh, typically uh, you wouldn't know unless somebody's told you about it. So um, one of these is what we call a schematic. And a schematic is the way engineers typically represent electrical circuits. So for example, the schematic for this circuit with the light bulb and the two batteries would be drawn something like this. And you'll notice that what I'm drawing here, not particularly smoothly, are symbols that represent, oh, that was awful, that represent the components in my circuit, but they represent them symbolically. So this funny thing right here represents one battery. This funny symbol here represents another battery. And the squiggly guy here represents the, the light bulb. Uh, this is the schematic representation of a battery or a voltage source. And this is the schematic representation of a resistance, which a light bulb uh, is typically modeled as. OK. One of the things you'll notice is that the schematic does not 
show you where things are physically located in the sense that um, I, in my picture I have the batteries over here and my light bulb over here. In the schematic, uh, I can have the batteries pretty much anywhere I want. I've moved them over to the left side because that's typically where you see sources. And the um, resistor, which represents the light bulb, is on the right side. What the schematic does correspond to or represent is the electrical connections between the um, components in the circuit. So, for example, this wire, which connects the positive terminal of the battery to the light bulb, is represented in the schematic by this line. Uh, this wire which connects the light bulb to the negative terminal of the battery is represented by this line. Now again in a lumped element circuit model we assume that um, the wires are perfectly conducting which again is not a good assumption if your wires are 100 feet long but if your wires are 2 inches long it's not a bad assumption. So um, that means that, um, well, we'll talk about this later, but for example, the voltage between anywhere on this red wire up here and this green wire down here will be the same no matter where in the schematic. I could look at it here or here or here and here or here or here. It doesn't matter where in the schematic I look at the wire. Uh, that wire will have the same voltage everywhere. Okay, so we're almost done. Uh, there's one last thing that we need to talk about, and this is the idea of an open circuit and a short circuit. Uh, we'll talk about these again later, but just to let you know what they are. A short circuit is any connection between two nodes and in this case, a node represents, in this simple circuit, a node is represented by a line. So I've got the red node and the green node. A short circuit is any connection between two nodes that shouldn't be there. So in this case, what I've drawn with this brown line is a short circuit um, between the positive end and the negative end of the batteries. So this is like maybe my wire had snuck up here and contacted the positive terminal. That's a short circuit. An open circuit, on the other hand, we'll draw an open circuit oops, between the batteries. Okay, so an open circuit I create by breaking a connection, and an open circuit represents two nodes that are not connected that should be. So this concludes this uh, video. Uh, we'll uh, go on to all sorts of useful circuit analysis, but again, the goal of this video was to give you some fundamental concepts, give you some fundamental ideas of things that you need to know in order to be able to do circuit analysis.